All right, let's get cracking. Anthony, introduce yourself for any newcomers. Joe, what's up, man? How are you? Gail, what's going on? Anthony Angelo, branch manager with the TAG team over here at Miami Shores, Paramount Residential Mortgage Group, uh, CEO, founder of TAG Team Nation Marketing Company, uh, and been doing this about 18 years. And what I do best is lending, marketing, automation, conversion on leads. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. A lot of, a lot of things to go over, but more importantly, uh, how we operate is a little bit different than most lenders. Our systematic approach and our, our automation allows us to really organize um, you as an agent. Uh, and we just learned this a couple of days ago with uh, the wonderful Kashana Guzman and her numbers have increased dramatically because of our organization and because of that communication back and forth. So uh, very important that you guys understand that us lenders and title agents like Melinda herself and uh, her team, it's all about communication. So with that being said, I will lead it off to our co-host, Melinda Grimaldi. <clears throat> Hi guys, good morning. Melinda Grimaldi, your real estate and title attorney and co-host of Damage Control. We are uh, on episode- 34. <laughs> 34, I never know, I never know. I, Anthony has to always fill in that blank. Episode 34. We're talking about sales and marketing. Um, and I think it's going to be a good one. We're going to have a little bit of a different spin on how we're going to roll. What do you think, Anthony? You think it's going to be a different spin? We'll yeah, try. Hopefully, definitely. hopefully definitely. you guys will implement a few things after today. Um, we worked hard creating some content for you guys. Um, it's all brand new stuff. So let's see. Let's rock a roll. So, um, with that being said, full service real estate and title firm here uh, in South Florida. We help get you closed and we look forward to seeing all you guys uh, in person, hopefully soon. <laughs> but let's get cracking, right? So Anthony, I mean, you're, you're known for like the sales discussions. You're known for sales training. That's your, that's your thing. Yeah. So why don't you get on the line right now and explain to everybody why sales is so important should, and what should, exactly is sales should we make a live phone call that's what we should start doing live phone not call. today but maybe that's maybe a good idea for another day all right so what exactly is sales uh i, I those of you that follow me on instagram yesterday uh, i put a five six minute video out and i expressed that it's all about closing in and follow up. uh 90 percent of sales is follow-up Okay. And the concept here is, is that if we work together as a lender partner, real estate agent, vice versa, whomever your lender partners are, your title companies, whomever you're conducting business with, the communication is key. Okay. So sales is all about communication and alleviating any uncertainties in that buyer's mind. In our world, real estate, it's a borrower. Okay. So, uh, the concept here is, is that we want to give you the foundation and, and the goods of understanding how to communicate properly. And can you hear me? Are you, can you hear me? You can't hear me? Hold on. Can you guys hear me? Right, Joe, right in the panel, brother? All right, we're good. All right, so her, her phone's the one that screwed up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Let me let me roll with this. So bottom line, guys, is that um, where I was going with this is that we want to give you the tools and the foundation on how to close and how to properly prospect. All right. When I ask the question, how many people in this audience right now make uh, multiple calls during the week? You all said 10. OK, you're making about 10 to 20 calls a week. Your output needs to be massive. You need a massive output and that comes with all levels. So when you really analyze sales, what is sales? Sales is the valet gentleman that I spoke to this morning who's got amazing charismatic. This guy, this kid is amazing. And so what I did to him today, and this is a true story. I said, why are you working in valet, man? You, you, you don't belong here. And he, he straight up said to me, I'm, I used to work at Chase Bank. Um, he's like, I got laid off with COVID. That's sales. Me making the attempt to contact that gentleman to say, hey, what's going on? Thank you so much for bringing me my keys. He valets my car every single day. The kid is upbeat. He 
He's, he's systematic on top of his game, on point. That's sales. Me making an introduction, taking action, thinking about it two days prior saying, should I reach out to this guy? Because, you know, is he going to be worth the shot? So that's sales right there. But how much massive output are you guys putting out into the universe? Meaning, we just tried Clubhouse yesterday, okay? First time on Clubhouse, we had a great audience. We need to do more of that. How many times are we gonna effectively do that? That's sales. How many phone calls are we making? Is it 10 a week? Okay, that's a start, but it should definitely be 10 plus a day. Who do I make phone calls to? Prospects, past agents, we're gonna go into that. Uh, we've got detail um, daily battle plan for you guys that you'll be receiving tomorrow. We spent hours on this daily battle plan and we've got 125 questionnaire that we're also gonna be sending you as well. That is the foundation and the goods for you guys to start and trying to, to, to get to the levels that you wanna to get to. All right, so hopefully Melinda, that answers sales on, on what sales is, but the massive output that you need to make is going to be the, out, uh, the output that you guys receive and that's gonna be your number. <coughs> They always say numbers don't lie, right? So the more numbers you put on those boards, the more numbers you're gonna close. Back in the heyday, okay, when I worked at Countrywide, I was the highest producer at that office, all right? And in the region, I was also the highest cancellation rate. Okay, so why is that? Why is that? How did I have so many cancellations, but yet I was a top producer? Because I had massive output. I kept prospecting, following up, closing prospect and following up, closing prospect and following up closing, right? And not necessarily in that order, but I broke down my days. I broke down my weeks. I broke down my hours. I had it on a scrapbook. I still have it here somewhere. And I show these guys everything, all my goals. That's organization, okay? That's not necessarily, you know, sales. That's being organized to get to your, to, to get to your numbers. So, so that's very important. I'm going to jump in now. Go ahead. Because I'm back. <clears throat> you said a few things that I want to like touch on. The cancellation rate, we talked about this in other episodes too. It's a part of our business. Yeah. The rate is the rate depending on what, like, you know, everyone's rate might be a little different depending on who you're working with. But at the end of the day, it's part of our business. So you can't rely on that one deal a month because it, there's, a, there's, there's a good probability based on the nature of the cancellation rate that it, one will cancel. So you need to go with more. So the more you go, the, the more you, you might can't have cancellations, but that's okay. So don't be afraid of that. Build that into your numbers so that you, you have buffer for getting to your goals. Um, but a lot of Anthony, what Anthony said ties into marketing too. Like uh, Clubhouse is really, the, is really marketing. You're selling yourself perhaps, but it's really a marketing tool just like Instagram, just like, you know, but they're sometimes so intertwined with each other, which is why we put them together in today's show. Um, because lead generation stems from marketing, which feeds into sales, right? It's kind of like the tie between the two. And um, we need you guys to start being more systematic in both your marketing and your sales. Um, because I don't think... Yeah, everyone can probably get better at sales, like getting on the phone and their phone skills, right? But I don't think any of you really don't know how to market your business. Everybody knows. Does anyone here feel like they don't know how to market their business? If you could please join, uh, mention in the Slack. Well, not to interject, um, or the Slack. In the not chat. to interject, but what do uh, what do you need help with? Um, marketing. Sixty percent of the audience right now is saying marketing. But what, a, I don't see the poll results for whatever reason. What about marketing do you need help with? What is it really? Does anyone want to share? Because that we can, we can like go totally off topic and, and, and go in what you guys uh, want, want to see. You I'm just gonna, added Dana gonna, on the I, fly. I totally, I totally add Dana on the, on the spot because I know she's that, that type of person that will deliver. Dana, do you want to elaborate <laughs> real quick? Is this an astro? Um, I'm so sorry. Could you repeat that? I'm, I'm, I'm in the car. I'm so sorry. No, what, I'm sorry. What in particular, that's okay. What in particular do you want help with uh, for marketing? Honestly, I think 
my, I, I have to get a little more systematic. I do my post in the morning. Some mornings it gets a little crazy and I don't like to pre-schedule anything because I like to do things based upon like what I'm feeling. I don't want to just have something that may be like tone deaf that goes out there. So that's something I'm kind of, I, I kind of need some help with is what I need to do with myself. I have to hold myself a little more accountable with that. On the systematizing of the posting. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll, 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 that's actually... Yeah, that's actually what we're going to be talking about um, later on. So we, we, we figured that's what most people really ask, because you know how to post. You know what posts work. You know what, uh, you know, it's not that you don't <clears throat> know what to do. It's that you just need to do it in a more systematic approach and, and have it done. Right. Yeah. So I think that's, that's, that's what Dana's issue is. And I think a lot of people's issue are. Unless you just turn on Instagram today, right, for the first time, like, you might need some social media training, because you don't know how to make a post, you don't know what hashtags are, you don't know what stories are, yeah. things like I, that. I know that part, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Anthony, what were you going to say? So, so here, here, Joe, to answer your question, too, I feel like posts on educational content doesn't necessarily convert people to buy on Instagram. All right, Alex in the back, who's keeping quiet right now, and, and I tell him that because we're, we're obviously live. He just made a video, and all I heard was me, me, I, I, me, me, I, I. And I told him, brother, nobody wants to hear about you. That, it's the last thing. that They don't even know who you are. Unless you're Steve Jobs, God rest his soul, nobody knows you. Nobody wants to know you, and they don't care about that. So if I'm going to try to sell content online or educate somebody it is not about Melinda, myself, and what we're going to do for you guys. What's the value proposition that you're selling? The cup of coffee from Starbucks or how good it tastes and maybe elaborating on a story. What happened in line when I got this Starbucks coffee? All right. Why is it so tasty in my mouth? I love this. I, I, I can't, you know, it gives me, you know, energy. Why am I trying to sell this? What am I trying to do? What is the value proposition that I'm trying to sell? I feel like agents and lenders talk about rates and programs and their listings. That is the last thing I want to talk about. I wouldn't go there. I would think something that's going to be unique, the location, the school districts, how the schools are going to edu you know, be greater for your children to be parked in, in Davie versus you know, Coral Springs. Uh, the, the rates, I would talk about the trends on what's happening with the impeachment and talking about you know what's going on with this election trickling up the market, uh, Moderna and all of the stocks that are going. Think outside the box that is not pertaining to your business, Joe. To answer your question, marketing should be abstract. It should be. It should suck someone in to lure them in to say, hey, who is this person? What is she or he about? Okay, and now that engagement needs to be automated. And that's a whole different episode on how to automate engagement and direct market. But the, the sales part, when I was explaining about Alex over here, he's talking about himself. Now, there's a certain extent that you should talk about yourself. Uh, obviously, when the, the, the question is, hey, who are you? Do I know you? What do you do, Alex? Oh, I'm a lender. I work for Paramount Residential Mortgage Group. But let's go back on the topic. Your pain point, you were saying that you don't have a cash to close, blah, 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 blah. So when you're pitching someone and you're closing someone, there's two different things. There's another thing. There's, there's, there's selling somebody, okay? And then there's closing somebody. And I feel like a lot of the agents and uh, the lenders that, you know, around the, our so you know i'd say south florida okay in general they're constantly selling themselves on social media and constantly selling their services that if you scroll through social media that's all you see is services services rates programs this that blah 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 the same crap but just repeated by this different person so if i'm gonna look and we that, see it because obviously we follow a lot of agents so uh, you know we we see that trend of 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 posting and so you know it's like that you got to do more than that so now uh they say you're supposed to be a little educational a little a little bit personal a little bit you know about business a little bit or whatever just to, i'm gonna tell you this social media is not direct sales social media is to um bring awareness to what you do it's to remind people what you do there's very few direct sales 
that happen in that way. Eventually, someone, when they, because not everybody needs to buy and sell and rent every day. You know, that, that person may not need, that follow you, may not need your business uh, services for like years, right? But the idea is for you to constantly remind them what you do, but not in that, let me sell you real estate, because they're not going to be interested in that, right? Because they don't care right now, because they're not looking to buy or sell real estate. They're no. looking for something educational, maybe entertaining, maybe something they can relate to. They're, so someone asked, what is, what is marketing? Marketing is, is the, the, the ability to give your sales department leads. And then there's long game and then there's short game, okay? So you need to be constantly marketing yourself and reminding people what you do throughout the days because one day they will be ready and then hopefully you impress them with your stories and your, your outreach, right? So um, by con just saying, let me list your house or I'm looking to sell, you know, they have all those funny memes, like I'm looking to sell, like, you know, I'm out of listing who, who, who has the next one. Those are funny and things to put in your stories and like remind people that way. But to put for posts, it needs to be something people can relate to, engage with, regardless of whether they're going to buy or sell that year. Yeah. Okay. Because other because the idea is for you in, in, in Instagram and in Facebook is to grow your following so that you have more people in the pool. And if you have more people in the pool, you'll have more people looking to buy now and more really people to add it to your pipeline for this year. I hope that that's starting to like make sense. So if you're only spending time on Instagram talking about selling property now, and you have a thousand followers or 2000 followers, you know, there's going to be only so many people that are going to service you that are going to need those services that, you know, during that time you need to grow and to be able to grow, you need to expand what you're talking about and, and grow other people's interests. The reality is people love babies, people love dogs, people love inspirational. Things. People love to know, learn about your city. People love to learn about your hobbies, like and and get following within those niches. If you're a dog person, posting about your dog is not just because you have nothing else to talk about. It's posting about your dog because other people, you know, are dog people, and then they can relate to you. And then if you hashtag it right, you might show up in people that don't follow you. And I'm like, oh my god, look at this cute little puppy, right? Joe has a cute little puppy. He's posting about all his puppy all the time. I love that because if you're hashtagging right. Other puppy people will find you, you know, and then from there, them finding you, they'll probably follow you if they like what you posted. And then if they follow you, you're growing your pool, right? Instagram is long game, guys. It's very rarely short game because if, if, if people already know you on there, it's not really an instinct. It's, it's like reminding them, just reminding them. And then it's long game to grow your following. So you need to in your marketing plan, it's not just have long game. You need to have short game because that's why you're waiting for that deal to come to the door because you're, everything's long game. You can't just be posting on Facebook and Instagram and thinking the deals are going to come in because that's not how it works. You need other things, other ways to lead generate because those lead generations are long game. Now, the, now if you see those realtors that have 10K followers plus and they're always posting, they're going to get DM and say, hey, actually, I do need you to help me. I was looking for you because I remember you did real estate and I don't know anybody else. They're going to get those leads because they have a larger pool. But if you're waiting in your pool of a thousand, two thousand, you're not going to get it, especially if your pool is um, colleagues, you know, and things like that. So you got to figure out, you know, what your angle is and, and grow and use it with that strategy. Let me know. Let me, no, that's good. It's all good stuff. And I, I feel like it's great that we're doing open discussion because people can chime in. I feel like people want direct answers. Um, let me just give examples of what we do. So that way that might give you guys some sort of vision of, of, of how we really go at it. Okay. Uh, we're not sitting here structuring deals all day. When I was at other lenders and I had multiple people working for me, I would see the loan officers sitting in front of the computer for hours, man, hours, just just literally sucking their energy dry and going to you know, structuring files and sitting there for literally five, six hours. And I would think to myself, that poor bastard is wasting five hours of his or her day. Now that's a good deal. That's money on you know in their pocket. That's food on their plate. That's providing for the family. Don't get me wrong. 
Okay, but you just lost five hours of the day to prospect or potentially follow up on past clients. I had an agent call me the other day, okay, and I had an agent text message me about Zillow Leads, Realtor.com, Commissions Inc., this one, that one. Um, honest to God, the answer that I said is, what about the past clients that we have? You, know, you, you guys all have past clients that nobody takes the time to call. What am I going to say? What do I post? How do I post it? You need to sit down. Melinda and I sat down yesterday. I shit you not for four hours creating content for you guys. Okay, four hours, man. And 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 that's the discipline it takes to, to prolong this show that is going to keep going and going and going. The same thing when I ask the question, how many posts do you guys make? 10 posts, one of no, three, five, 10, 21, 25. The majority of you said three posts a week. So that tells me that you're trying to reach three people a week. Why not 30? How do I reach 30? Okay, if you all have not read 10X with Grant Cardone, I would, I would encourage you guys to, to obviously read that. Kudos to him. Um, but bottom line is, is that if I'm in your shoes, I would try to make a little zero on there and say, all right, three, zero. I should be posting 30 times uh, uh, a week. Now, at this well, not posting as in the stories, stories, That's showing me. up, showing up, showing story, up, whatever the case is. The output is how much you need to put out there, and that means showing up. Tonight, we have women's council, we're going to the installation dinner. Showing up, there's me agents there. This isn't just about eating and drinking, it's mingling and talking about business. Showing up, being there, being consistent, being disciplined with your actions, and and building your content for a week or months ahead of the game. Oh, but I'm not gonna have a weekend. Top shit, you're not gonna have a weekend. You might not have two or three weekends, but you'll be ahead of everyone else. I got my hair cut this morning. I'll leave it with this and I'll stop or ramble. And I said, dude, I'm in here at 7 a.m., okay? This guy's there at 6 a.m., my, my, my stylist barber dude. There's nobody in there. And I asked him, I said, Nobody comes in here. He goes, no. He's like 11 o'clock, they show up. They're, they're just trickling in. They're happy with life. They're making their money. They're complacent. Idleness is the devil's workshop. Been there and done that. Why? Why not say, hey, look, I've got a family. I can get there at 6 a.m. From 6 to 12, I might be able to cut, I don't know, 10 other people's heads. And I, I, I could make an extra $300 and monetize that and probably make six figures by doing that. But the hell with it. We're going to walk in and stroll in at 11 a.m. That is being disciplined to try to do that. And, and, and that makes him stand out. So I would be marking it about that. I would say, hey, listen, we're there when others are not there. The availability is there. We're here to cater to you. That's the type of marketing that you guys got to think of that's going to make you and set you apart from your, your competitors. All right. Yeah. I think, look, so, so what do you think about 30? Don't post 30 times. Uh, don't take that literally. What what he means to say is showing up. You need to be showing up all the time. So if, since we're on the top, we talked a lot about Instagram. It seems like that's where people are spending most of their time, uh, especially in real estate, although Facebook too, it, you, it could be the same thing because there's stories there too. When it comes to social media, I don't know about you guys, but when I go on for, for shits and giggles and not like for work and I'm just like scrolling, I start in the stories. Who else does that? I'm sure everybody does that, right? You start in the stories and then you scroll. When I'm done with my stories is when I scroll because for me, the stories is where it's at. For me, the story is where I find out and learn about people. For me, the stories is where you build relationships because you can engage as to what's going on, okay? So you need to be in your stories. Now, everyone's like, I don't want to be like, you know, always, listen, I'm actually, I just planned a post um, for, for later this week, and it's basically the text for the post. If, if you're too afraid to talk about yourself, nobody else will, okay? Guys, you cannot be afraid to market your business. Once you get over that hurdle, it's gonna be a whole different ball game. I'm telling you, a whole different ball game. I, five, six years ago, I, you wouldn't catch me posting on social media. You wouldn't catch very, very little. And it was very boring and it was, doesn't really matter. It was just, it, I had private accounts and it was just the people I knew and that was it. Like there was really no point. I would post like once in a blue. Okay. Um, now everything is so strategic. I want to remind people what I do. 
And I, I don't have to remind them necessarily all the time, oh, I close deals, that's what I do. No, I remind them with other things, right? And then you start to build the relationships with people. I can't tell you the relationships I built in the DM. I bet you some of you on this call, that's where it started, yeah. right? Well, or it know. started on here and then we moved to DM, you know, and we build the relationships. Relationships is where it's at, guys. So uh, building the relationships, taking the people you meet on social and pulling it out and taking them out of there into, you know, real life because you know how that is, right? So, um, but, and it's that that comes from consistency and reminding yourself to do it and getting out of your head and just doing it. So um, with regards to just doing it, you know, post something, like share some things about what you're doing, talk about your date, you know, a, a post about like a sharing in your story about your coffee it like you'll always get engagement on it. Put a little funny thing with it, whatever. It, it's so simple to get engagement, um, and just you just have to start talking. And in the beginning, some you probably won't get engagement because you're if you're following small, you won't get that much engagement. But eventually, people will start to to talk to you if you're talking to them. Right, so let me, like you pick up the phone, hey guys, you know, this is what we're doing. And that's how you build the relationship. Thing. Let me say one thing. Let me interject. There's a delay. I apologize. Yes. So okay. the, Crystal saying um, direct mail. Crystal, I don't. If you want to elaborate on direct mail, you mean snail mail, or do you mean like marketing by email? That I, please answer back on something like that. And then we've got another question. Um, I would like to market my business through using funnels. I'm assuming uh, throughout funnels. Okay. Um, you want to talk about email campaigns because you're you're notorious with that See, the thing is, is like like these are all very technical things and there's nothing we could tell you on this call on how to do it you got to look it up you got to sit down you got to get the program you got to learn it you got to figure it out you got to hire a va to help you we're not going to be able to teach you all the technical things because first of all we would it would take much longer than the show and it would require us to like really like have you sit down and do it because the only way you're really going to learn is if you sit down and play around with the programs, if you sit down and play around with the systems that help you do these types of things. Okay. So yes, that's one of the ways you can you market your business. It's a, they're all great tools. Everything that everyone that everyone's talking, everything that people are listening in the chat, those are all great strategies. Yes. Reaching out to FISBOs, reaching out to expired listings, just so many ways um, to continue to market and, and, and sell your services, but you got to do it. And right, there's so, classes, technical classes on all these things. You just got to do it. So, here, so here's the thing. Um, I don't know if you guys know click funnels or if you're familiar with any of that stuff. I don't want to get into detail here because that, that's a whole different ballpark. But, and, I, and I'm sure most of you guys would want to take some sort of DC class on that. And I'd be more than happy to, to show you what we do. Uh, and it would be cool to, to do something. It, it's kind of, it's very in depth. Joe knows this because he's in the IT world. Uh, but long story short, guys, like, like I said from the beginning, what is going to set you apart from your competitors? The reason why I built my system and I didn't want anyone to physically build it. And I knew that, okay, I can't talk about rates and programs or any of that stuff. Not even though I have a license from, you know, a RESPA compliance issue. I, I don't want to, you know, stir that that can of worms. So, I knew that in our business there was a lack of communication, and it was horrendous the lack of communication. Nobody, or it's miscommunication. The listing agent's pissed off at this person. Now the buyer's agent's thinking the listing agent's right, so the buyer's agent calls the title company, and they're they're screaming and yelling, and it is awful, awful communication. And when the title agent's probably not even wrong, or there's just missed. It's almost like that Ellen show that you guys watch, if you've ever watched it, and they're trying to, you know, play that game and they're singing a little jingle here. And by the end of it, nobody even knows one word that came out of there. So that's exactly what's happening in our business. What I've done is I said, that's a problem in our business. I've built funnels around the pain points of our business to educate in a tactful way the consumer and then all third parties that are associated with that deal. So now there's no miscommunication. And all of those text messages and those emails and those videos, they're buffing the communication. So that's a way of marketing. What is going to set you apart? If I'm a KW agent, am I allowed to change the emails? 
talk to your team lead or your broker and, and say, hey, can I tweak these emails or are they stock and they're, you know, and, and legal is not going to allow me to do that. What is going to set you apart? So when you direct market to answer the question, if you're going to do email marketing, do not direct market what they're sending, which is just generic stock images. It needs to be something that is going to make you stand apart from your competitors. All right. And what is that? I can't answer that question. Melinda can't either. You need to sit down for an hour and say, what is it? What is Joe? Joe, what is it going to make you different? You know, I know you like yoga, man. Maybe that's uh, you, you're, you know, you, where you go. Okay. Know that you have a dog. Maybe that's where you go. You have to really analyze that and then build around that and then go with it and roll with it. All right. Um, what do we got? Okay. On so the, the, the point of this call is sales and marketing. You can learn, all of you can learn anything. You just got to do it and then tweak it until it starts, until it starts ge gelling. Right. So how, how, we want you guys to just start doing, right? We, you guys can't get worked up in perfection also. And that's, that's an important part. So we created um, a daily battle time for you guys to basically go through and remind you to make your calls, who to make your calls to, um, what to do in your stories and your posts and stuff. So we're gonna, you're gonna be getting that after the show. You literally can print out a week's worth of that and then um, you know go through it and, and use it like as a as a, a guide for your calls and your and you could literally check off as you go along so you know you at least hit some numbers for the day and it'll trigger you to do things and yes some days stuff goes crazy and you may not get through it all but at least you have a plan instead of just getting there okay now what do I do right so at the end of each day you plan your next day with who you're gonna call why you're calling them who you're gonna, uh, what you're gonna post about, whatever. You could like just get ideas down. And then at least even in the business of the day, you could, in between appointments, you could pick up the phone and knock out those calls. Because it's consistency and just doing things that are gonna get you successful this year. Yeah. And doing more than what you've been doing. Exactly. Because if everyone on here, I'm sure wants to grow their business next year, so you gotta do more than what you did last year. Yeah. Period, yeah. period period. Like I, like I'm going to bring it up again, but the beginning of last year, I was reading 10X again. It was my second time. The first time I did it resonate with me. Then I read it again. I was like, I need to do more. And I feel like I'm doing that right now. At the beginning of last year, I'm like, this is what I'm doing. I have two webinars a month. I'm going to do a weekly thing on, on Clubhouse. I have two weekly things on Clubhouse. We have damage control every week. Uh, part of women's count, like I just am uh, all over the place. My calendars are booked and packed and I have the year plan with content and ideas. And yes, some things change around, but I need you guys to become obsessed with your marketing. If you're not obsessed with your marketing, so, then you know, you, 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 you're going to lose, you need that momentum and that will, and, that you, and you have to keep being obsessed even when it's not working because things take time. So don't Veronica, give up. Veronica's got a question. It's a, it's a very, it's a valid question. And, and, I'll express what I do, but she's she's just basically saying Asana, which is a great platform. Uh, she has a batching of content that she now is running out of information and basically ideas. So how does one create new ideas? Okay, and what do you do, Melinda, uh, to be proactive on your ideas that are going to cover, I don't know, six months, because I feel like a lot of people procrastinate and then they run out of ideas and then the time frame hits and they're just, they stop. So I plan, um, I have a team now that helps me after all this time, of course. Um, but I plan a month in advance because things change and we're so much stuff. Uh, yeah, we must be obsessed with our marketing. <laughs> I'm trying to hold my face. I can relate to that because they don't always like it. You're, you, you know, because you become so obsessed with it. But at the end of the day, once you get to a certain point, then 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 the machine is is the machine starts to yeah like level out. And now I'm at a point where yeah, I was I was obsessed for two years, but now I'm at a point where I can breathe. Yeah. Um, and, and things are just ha like things are happening, even though I don't stop, I'm not stopping, but it's not like an obsession, but it needs, you need, to, if you want to grow, you need to be obsessed. Yeah. 
Okay. Otherwise, other, or you'll grow much. If you want to grow fast, you need to be obsessed. Yeah, that's awesome. Anthony's obsessed. I'm I'm upset. Anything I touch, I get I become extremely obsessed with, and that's that's just, and that's it. I want to master it. I want to dominate it. I just I want to keep going. And then I get people that are saying you're just greedy. Why do you aren't you should enjoy life, balance this, blah blah blah. Listen, man. I for me, it's moving that boulder up the the, the damn hill. That's what I get. That's that's me. I need to do that every day. I it has that's part of my routine. So then with everything else comes the numbers. All right. And it's great. Don't get me wrong. Everything's awesome. But now I want my team to be on that level too. I'm down their butts all the time. You'll ask them, let's go, let's go pick it up, pick it up. I want things structured uh, a specific way, but I know that they're going to reap the, the fruits of their labor and then they're going to have financial freedom. They're going to feel more comfortable. They're going to have less stress. They're going to be able to vacation with their family, provide for their loved ones, you know, bring them uh, here for vacation, whatnot. Another question we have, uh, Teddy said. Um, hang on, hang on. I didn't answer the. I didn't answer the last question because we got we squirreled right. on the the divorce joke, creating content and where to get ideas. So there's certain things that you'll only get in the moment, right? Like our closing pictures, our event pictures. You can't pre-plan that, right? But you know there's going to be some of those in 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 the works. What you can pre-plan is holidays. You can pre-plan some good quotes. You can know I'm going to look up some stats, uh, you know, to see where the market's at. Like the board always puts out stats. I find that super interesting uh, to see the stats of the market. Uh, making sure your following feels confident about the real estate market is, is an, I think, an uh, important thing to drop in there. You shouldn't be talking about it every single day, but I think like one or two little things, or even just in the story, be putting that there. Um, so those are the types of things that you can pre-plan. We can't pre-plan everything because things are happening live and the things that are happening live are much more interesting for people. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? Anthony does, you do it on the daily, right? You just always plan for the next day. I, I, I there's one, I, I have two wonderful gals that now that help me with the marketing and with all of the DC stuff and everything. W Melinda and I are the brain behind everything. We, we put that foundation down. Uh, we, we analyze and critique and then those two girls edit and spice things up. Okay. Uh, and, and so now we're fortunate to have that, but before it was all of us doing that. And prior to that, um, I made a promise to myself with social media, yeah, it's played out. Okay, I'll be I'll be straight up saying to everyone that it's played out. But I like inspirational quotes. But I made a promise to myself that I'm not going to break every single night before bed. I, I I create that one piece of content. I don't want to parlay that to someone else. I want to have some value, and I want to know that I'm doing and contributing uh, because that is where it came from. So. You know, even though that it's inspirational and everyone's doing inspirational for me, it's it's something that I appreciate and, and want to share. Uh, and so every single night, that's what I create. And then I post that. You'll be surprised. There's a lot of DMs that I get on that uh, great content. And then that engagement starts. And that's how you build relationships. We're building relationships right now, um, you know, nationwide on DMs. And now with Clubhouse, it's wild. I mean, it's it's you know, I was telling Melinda yesterday. There's a lot of opportunity out there and we're stuck, you know, in, in South Florida here. Why? Why aren't we scaling somewhere else and, and, and trying to expand? So that's all this is about is expanding your market and your outreach and having that omnipresence and really just, um, you know, captivating your audience and making ideas more and, and, and refreshed. I see that Sarah's watching us um, on live right here on Facebook. So shout out to mm -hmm. her. That girl is great, man. She's got it going on. And I got to say her content is raw. It's related. It's just, you could relate to it. Uh, and she talks about like the pain points of the industry. I think everyone needs to talk about that. I think all of the clear to closes and contract except is they're played out. Okay. What, what's really going on in our industry? That's what I would be marketing. Okay. If I'm going to, I'm going to really lay it out there. That's something that I would, would definitely uh, focus on. Uh, but Dana's like, yes, <laughs> she just dealt with it. She got a DU uh, from one of our um, episodes. We had a we're going over DU and she called me up uh, on a Saturday. She's like, Anthony, there's no assets. They're even assets. The, the, the DU has been ran multiple times. The credit report expired in August. I mean, it was, it's like, it's or May. I don't even remember what it was. She's like, don't they have to repull? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, holy crap. 
I got goosebumps. I'm like, you just aced the test. Like you totally paid attention to our DC DU uh, topic. And now she's utilizing that information. Uh, and it's cool to see that because it's working. And so kudos to you, Dana. Um, <laughs> many garbage. Uh, also stuff. another great way to create content is to explore your city and visit different places and shout them out. Um, it's a great way to show love to other businesses and, and people you know and have great content uh, for people. And people are always looking to learn more about the cities and the restaurants and the, you know, the places to visit. So I think it's a, a great strategy. If you like to cook, show what you're doing in the stories. You don't have to post about it, but show who you really are and what you're doing and just document yourself a little bit. I think that, I think that that works and you don't have to be so like, um, uh, you don't have to overthink it that much. Although I know we do the, the more natural you are about it and just talk to the people who are there with you. It, it goes, it goes a long way. So what is, so, um, is our FISBO is a good way to get listings. That's one of our questions. Um, I know a lot of agents that have success with it, but the only way you'll have success with it is if you just slam the phones and you got to be on the phone and you got to make your calls and you got to make a lot of them because most people will hang up on you. I, so I posted about this a couple of days ago. So Sadi, I would go back to my posts. I explain it in the post in detail. I mean, it's, it's raw information and it took me two hours before bed to do that to really analyze and look at all that stuff and then make sure that, you know, it's legitimate. And uh, I posted it and basically I, no, no seller is going to want to ha have a phone call with you. And, and how are you going to close that seller? That's a hard pitch, uh, but I explain it in detail. And um, it's something that, you know, I would definitely use and, and try to, you know, put in your arsenal. But if you are not following us, then follow us on IG and, and look up that post. I think it's like three posts ago. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Uh, Sadi, awesome. Yeah, look at that. What is the other thing too, uh, Melinda, that we wanted to talk about? We have 15 minutes um, here. <clears throat> yeah, so we're, we're, I'm liking the, um, the vibe of you guys, you know, chiming in and, and, and telling us where you want us to go with the conversation. So keep doing that. But so, and it's, so you're going to get your schedule for the day. If you're listening to this and you're a subscriber, you'll get the, the schedule for your like a day planner to not include your appointments, but to include your criticals and to include your um, your call. You're also going to be getting, I think it's 125 ways you can promote yourself and get more clients. So it's going to be little things that trigger and there's a lot of them. And so I don't want you to go through and get overwhelmed by it. I want you to go through and pick one a week or one a month, depending on how big they are. And you're just going to take it and start implementing it into your discussions, implementing it into your, like one is just having a, um, know your elevator pitch, like practice it, write it, figure it out, like write it out, then memorize it and practice it. It sounds silly. Everyone's probably like, yeah, I have an elevator pitch. And like, if you really start going through it and doing it, like you're probably going to stumble. You probably don't know very well because you didn't really practice it. Okay. Me, so I me, want you guys to practice it. Let me go over a couple of these real quick. So, and you guys will all get this. We were going to do a screen share, but decided not to on that. Um, thought, number one, that is the number one on the list is follow up uh, with your prospects within uh, less than 48 hours. I just posted this yesterday on how Kashana Guzman, thank you for allowing me to shout you out, why she's double in her business. She's on top of her age, I'm sorry, her, yeah, her, her borrowers. Uh, and she's, she's commenting and making those comments in her CRM and then passing and relaying that information to us. And that's before 48 hours. So if you're taking longer than 48 hours, because that's one of them on the 125, you know, um, questions to attract your clients to, to close with you, that's the main bread and butter right there. The time is going to allow you to convert the deal and therefore you're tag teaming that deal together to close that deal. If there's any uncertainty on numbers or the, 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 the particular property that they're looking at or showing, because you've shown five different uh, properties, that's when you get a second voice involved, like a lender to say, hey, can you do the, you know, the numbers for, you know, X, Y, Z. I'd even play dumb in that situation. And I would even say, 
all right, the lender is going to know the numbers. Why am I calling the lender? What the heck good is, is that doing? It's reinforcing and validating the uncertainty in the borrower's mind saying, hey, we've looked at five, but I'm uncertain. What's the uncertainty? What can I ask that question? I'm the lender. Of course, they're going to answer that. So it's, it's things like that. It's, it's, it's playing that psychiatrist role, basically, and having your lender partner alleviate the uncertainty. So these questions, when you look at 125, do not be overwhelmed and say, the hell with this, I'm not going to look at it. I would make it a promise to yourself and your family's you know, livelihood that every single week I would master one of them. Okay, so it takes you 125 weeks. So what? All right, by 100, by by. By week 125, you've mastered it, you've memorized it, and then you tweak it into your own words. You don't have to do verbatim of what we're telling you. I, the guys and girls in there, they're not mirroring exactly what I do. They have their own little tweak. Valerie always says, what's your why, client? You know, Why are you purchasing? I want to know what your why is. Great question. All right, so things like that. But these questions don't feel overwhelmed when you look at them. Really sit down and analyze them before bed and take on one of them and just think about it. Really think about it and take notes and write it down. If you want to get better at this business and master your craft, you need to do that type of work. Megan Finn. What else do we got on there? Give a few more. All right, let's go over. Um, there was one yesterday we, we went over. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find that one. Um, focus on your top five clients and referrals. I mean, that's, that's key. Guys, I, need, I need more. Critical. Dude, you closed five deals last month. I'd be calling them. Hey, what's going on? How are you? Blah, 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 blah. Send them a card, a thank you card, a Starbucks card, anything. Go have lunch with but them. But even asking them, how can, you're my like perfect client. How can I get more clients like you? Yeah. And asking that, and they might know somebody, or they'll definitely keep you in mind. They'll be flattered by that. Um, and you got to ask for the business. But the, like, if you're getting business from a referral source, let's say versus like a client, or, or some of those top clients will eventually start referring you business. Um, that right there are your VIPs. Okay. Yeah. And those VIPs, you need to nurture those relationships. So you need to be planning ahead on how you will be doing that. And, you know, every person is different every every relationship is different but you need to um make sure that you have uh you've set aside a time for that uh, look, um we prior have to prior to covid i would have I, I i have i've sent families um cleaning crew companies prior to closing here it's on us uh here's some pizzas with it uh go to the movies your your your, your house is approved uh, movies on me go ahead it, it's 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 not about hey I'm spending money on the client it's the it's the nice thing you buy me a cup of coffee Melinda all right in the morning and wow she's thinking about me it's cool man really good ethics very good values that's that's a good hearted person I want to do business with that person even if I've closed them already I still want to give the given aspect is going to come back in tenfold uh, but it's it's thinking that that way to market yourself so that way you're monetizing your business let me give another one. Um, Communicate what a bad lead is for you. That's that's awesome. Like, what is a bad lead? Guys, hit it up on on the DMs. Like, what define a bad lead? What you think is a bad lead? Because this is this is comical. Some of the stuff I see, they're not bad leads at all. Um, we just had a scenario yesterday. The gal needs to breach her lease. I said, go look at that lease and tell me how much money that lease is going to be. And then I'm going to see if I can get the agent and myself to waive lender fees to match whatever that cost is. What else is holding you back? Um, I, I don't know. I just moved here and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm debating on doing this, that area. I don't know what I'm going to find for X, Y, Z. The point is, is that you're alleviating the uncertainty. But what's a bad lead? That's not a bad lead. That's a good lead. Someone who wants to see houses but won't get pre-approved. Amen, brother. Let me, let me elaborate on that just for a second. Um, there's two clients right now that we have, and those two clients we are most likely not going to work with. The reason why, and I, and I express this to the buyer's agent, we have yet to receive documents. We, we've made a promise in this team, on this team, that if we're not, if we're not going to see documents, that we know that person's not, too, you know, not interested or something's holding them back. We're following up with them out of respect for the buyer's agent, but we're communicating with the buyer's agent too. I'm not going to have them go out and look at houses 
All right, what do you do in a scenario where they just flew down? Because they did, they just saw a house two nights ago, they fell in love with the house, I need a pre-approval letter. I don't have docs. I don't even have an app. So right now, and I get it, man. I've been there, done that. There's a $700,000 deal, it's right here. They're in the house, they like the house. Whoa, did we know they were coming down? I would have prepped all of this before they came down. Organize the way you conduct business. Melinda has this to a science and I do as well, but I think she's got me beat on this. She's organized it to the point where the intake form goes left, goes right, up, down, how she conducts business. So that way the buyer's agent knows where the hell they're going. All right, so there's no miscommunications. If I'm a buyer's agent, your intake form and how you conduct business, your service level agreements, you need to sit down and analyze that. What are they? Or is it just random? Okay, do you guys just play along and, and really just go with the, the, you know, the, the wind here? So, I mean, that's, that's something that I would really evaluate. Um, combative, dishonest, Vera Goldman said, that's definitely a bad lead, yeah. I, I fired clients and agents that were like that. Because I'm like, this is not the right step for me. This is not the right person or the right you know, relationship for me because it just creates havoc on everything else. Yeah. So, and they, they, they suck up all your time and energy instead of like work, you know, that 80, 20 rule that like take over 80% of your day for something crazy. Absolutely. Um, I'll do one they more. The same thing. Let's see. Uh, get testimonials from Raven fans. If you guys aren't doing that. That's good content to post. I mean, that's so self-explanatory, mm -hmm. but yet nobody does it. I'd be calling the, the, the buyer as soon as they execute contract. That's the most highlighted point of their the, of the milestone just so you know that's not the clear to close by clear to close most lenders are dragging their feet things are really you know, things are really crazy so by the clear to close time they're exhausted so i would be asking for referrals up front uh and that's great sales approach to get more deals to come in all right so we've got five minutes let's open it up to um some other there's questions. one more question here there's a question in the in the question and this one's really for you how many calls do you recommend do you recommend an agent make to reach 50 contacts a week what's your percentage in your closing rate okay i've got a 60 percent close rate on what i touch which is staggering i used to have a 26 percent. this was prior automation days all right, and that was staggering. That's when leads literally were, were online. They were called Lower My Bills at the time. Um, and well, Lending Tree were, were dispositioning them. How many calls do I make a day? I try to make at least 50 calls a day. Now, what does that mean? That means I make at least, at least 25 new prospect calls a day. All right, I'm always following up on all of my past real estate agents or clients. I'm diffusing any situation that occurs in operations because we're not perfect. Right, we 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 got a amazing operations. I mean, the best I've ever even ever had in my life, and God bless them all. But there's always situations that are going to come up, uh, and I'm always constantly emailing, and I'm videoing, and I'm text messaging. I do that specifically because when I end a call, I'm validating what I pitched. If they're not on that, if the if the loved one or the influencer is not on that phone call, I am going to make a video to reiterate what I pitched and said so that there's no miscommunication that the partner's trying to give all the information. Hey, honey, I, I wrote it down on notes for you. What the hell is this? I, I, I can't read this. Nobody's gonna, that's the recipe for disaster. So I am going to make sure that I have that video all composed. I'm gonna send the text message afterwards and say, hey, did you get the video? Okay, good, great. All the information is there. To reach your goal, you got to sit down and know your numbers. That's a whole different animal what we went over. But, so I think it depends, right? It also depends on who you're calling. If you're cold calling, it's going to be different than if you're calling your sphere and calling past clients and calling. So it just really depends on what you um, what you're looking to do, and then it also depends on what what how how good your phone skills are. So I would say at least. You're going to have to at least try two or three times that number if you want to actually get 50, 50 conversations going, if you're going to do a lot of cold calls, right? Um, so, you know, that, that, but it really all depends. And you're going to have to trial and error your own numbers to see if that's something that, you know, what, what that number looks like. And then that probably will get better with time. All right. There, there, there's, this is uh, Alex's numbers right here. 
All right, let me let me read it to you guys. Two fast track approvals a day, 10 fast track approvals a week, 520 uh, a year. Divide that number by 12, that's 43.3%. That's what he's gonna be submitted. He's got a 60% uh, closing rate, okay, with our automation. And that's with me. I, I'm the, the face of it, so it's my automation going out and, and the video content, so it helps him convert. He does do his own templates as well. Uh, he's trying to get to 26 closings a month himself. By doing those numbers, will he hit 26? He might hit 10, five, he'll get close. That's it. To answer your question, that's on the wall. <laughs> the kid put it on the wall. So I mean, that that's what you need to do. Okay, that needs to be your obsession. That needs to be your vision. Okay, um, yep. anything else? DMs from I, Facebook? I don't see any more messages. Dana, where's my business at? Where, where you at, girl? <laughs> I'm joking around. Um, I'm going to send out everything to you guys. Uh, and the content that we have, there's two pages for each uh, piece of content that will go out tomorrow. And um, it, it's recorded. So we do have this recorded, and uh, that's on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, those of you that like DC, please join us on Clubhouse. That will be next week as well with Bethany. That was wonderful yesterday. It was kind of weird when I was uh, muted and I was trying to talk and everyone's like, you got to unmute yourself. So, hey, you got to start somewhere too. We're all starting somewhere and now consistently doing your, your work. Uh, thank you, Jamie right, Rose, guys. for following on Facebook. Everybody have an amazing, amazing day. Ciao. See you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.